So um, without further ado, I, I do want to introduce uh, Tomi the Hat Ohanen. Um, Ohanen. How do you say your last name? Ohanen. Ohanen. Okay, I got it right. Um, and uh, you know what? I'm not even going to give him an introduction. He doesn't need one. He's got a hat like that. This guy's amazing. You're going to love it. I'm going to interview him afterwards and ask questions. He's going to ask every one of your. He's going to answer every one of your mobile. Without further ado, please give a big round of applause for. Thank, thanks. We're on. Yes. Th thank you, Gavin. Um, I kept my hat on only so that you can see me with the hat. I'm the crazy guy with the hat. I want to meet all of you afterwards. It's my trademark. So that's easy to find Tommy anywhere around the world. You know, we're at the, you know, uh, the business lounge in San Francisco or something. That's Tommy. And come and say hello. Talk to me, OK? That's why I have it. Now, um, normally I start with an opening joke. Today we don't have time. Sorry. There's something much more important. This is the anniversary year for mobile TV. Most of us were not doing it in 2001, but it is honestly 10 year anniversary for mobile TV. It was spring of 2001 when the first television content was made available that you could download onto a mobile phone. At the same time, almost exactly to the week, 10 years ago, this spring, first voting of television. The downloaded content was by finished uh, broadcaster Minus TV, uh, uh, Minus TV3, the, the, the commercial broadcaster. They offered 30 second clips of tonight's television news that you could download onto one mobile phone only that had a color screen at the time and the technology to handle this, which was the most expensive Nokia communicator that had just come out. And it took you two and a half minutes to download the clip to see 30 minutes, 30 seconds of tonight's uh, uh, TV news. But that was the start. And at the same time in England, MTV, Music Video, launched Video Clash. Revolutionary program where people, young people, crazy people, with their mobile phones could vote with SMS to select the next music video. Crazy idea. It will never work. Today, SMS voting is a $3 billion business around the planet. All of your American Idol, all of your, you know, uh, you know all the, the uh, Eurovision Song Contest, all that voting. Thank you to MTV and all the videos that we can show on, on mobile phones. Thank you to Minus TV. So anyway, anniversary time. So I have uh, some things I need to, to talk about. We're going to talk about mobile we're going to take a look around the world. So I'm Mr. Mobile Guy, 11 books about mobile. Um, and most of you, I believe, are more from the broadcast television media side. So I'm the Antichrist. I'm going to take, totally mess up your life. Completely, I'm Mr. Evil Guy, but you guys have no idea. You think you've read the stats. You listen to Forrester. You read the Gartner stats. You think you know. No, you do not know. We have to start with the size. It is much worse than you can possibly imagine. How big is it? How big is it? You guys know television. 1.7 billion television sets on the planet. Those of you who are from the internet, 2 billion internet users now on the planet. Those of you who are from the computer industry, 1.2 billion computers on the planet. Add them together. All televisions on the planet, all internet users on the planet, all computers on the planet, including the iPads, all of them together, that's 4.9 billion. I will trump you. Mobile has 5.2 billion paying subscribers today, growing by 600 million per year. This is by far the biggest technology on the planet. By far. We reach now villages where they have no electricity. We are in homes where there is no toilet, where there is no running water, and yes, only 4.2 billion people will brush their teeth, but 5.2 billion have a mobile phone. This is the industry we're talking about. You think size is important? No, that's only the start. Let's get real. How addicted are you? How addicted are your kids? How addicted are your parents? How addicted is the planet to mobile phones? This is where it gets scary. Latest number, Nokia now says, the average person on the planet looks at his mobile phone 150 times per day. 
150 times per day means for every waking hour, it means that you are looking at your mobile phone every six and a half minutes. Tommy has only 15 minutes to do this intro. In that time, you're going to look twice at your mobile phone to check on what's happening, look at the clock, send a text message, etc., tweet, etc. Now, if you are in France, you know, famous for smoking, if you are a very seriously heavy smoker and you smoke three packs a day, you only have 60 times a reason to pull a, a cigarette pack out of your pocket. But the average person looks at his mobile phone 150 times. Do you understand how addictive this is? How vicious this is? How totally beyond what we could hope, imagine this industry is like? That's what's facing you. But it gets worse. Look at teenagers today. 10% of British teenagers think it is okay to send a text message while having sex. I'm a 51-year-old guy. For me, this is, you know, I don't get this Facebook generation, etc. That's beyond me. But one in 10 kids, you know, will send, put their hand behind the pillow, you know, and actually there's a phone. They're sending a text message telling their friends. Yes, it's a different industry anyway. So what do we do with it? All of you have iPhones, or a couple of you are rebels and you have uh, Androids, OK? So that's not the future. I'm Mr. Mobile Guy, I love apps. I love smartphones. I have two in my pocket. Sometimes I walk around with three and absolutely love it. There are wonderful things happening in that space. For a media audience, forget the word smartphone, forget an app. That is complete waste of your effort and time for at least the next five years. Complete waste of your time. Complete waste. Look, iPod, iPhones. There are about 100 million iPhones on the planet. Now multiply it against all mobile phones. That's 2% of your audience. If you develop an iPhone app and you're a media brand, you are deliberately avoiding 98% of your addressable audience. That's pretty rotten strategy in my mind. Even if you take every smartphone made, there are more Blackberries than iPhones. Did you know there are more Nokia Symbian phones than all iPhones and all Blackberries combined on the planet, not in the United States, but on the planet? Then you have to take Microsoft smartphones, and then you have to take Samsung has its Bada. Then you have to take, you know, Hewlett Packard, they bought Palm, so you've got Web. Then there's Linux Mobile, all these others. Take all the smartphones together, that's 720 million uh, smartphones, that's 17 17% of the planet's mobile phones. Even if you deploy 10 different smartphone apps to cover the whole smartphone space, you are still ignoring 83% of your television audience. That's not smart strategy to me. OK? Yes, we can do that. Five years from now, well, let's talk about it, but not today. Today, we talk about this. How do we reach the world? We all love Twitter. You're all tweeting my stuff, right? You're just constantly you know, live tweeting this. Yes, I want to read afterwards what you said. Now, Facebook is bigger, bigger than Twitter. Facebook is four times bigger. We just heard beautiful things from Facebook. I love Facebook. I'm on both. But that's not the future. No, so email is twice as big as Facebook. Email is not the future. Get this. MMS. MMS that none of you use. MMS, picture messaging that we hate. MMS that is so expensive has 2.4 billion active users today. MMS has more users than total television sets. MMS is bigger than the total internet. MMS, the, world, the planet's biggest multimedia platform. If you're in television today and you don't understand MMS, you've lost your future. You will be a dinosaur out of business. Honest, you've lost your future. The biggest multimedia platform with 2.4 billion paying users and you're not on it. You're not using it. You don't understand it. You think that that is stupid and expensive that kids only do and will soon be obsolete? Come on. Tommy, I, you're, you're scaring me. It doesn't like, matter, but yes, <laughs> yes. Can you just make sure, just in case someone doesn't know, can you just give a quick definition of what MMS is? MMS is the standard for picture messaging sending from one phone to another, but it is actually a multimedia standard meaning that you can deliver pictures, you can deliver videos, you can deliver sounds, you can deliver long messages. Video. In China, including video. So you can send, if 160 characters is too short for your news story, you can send longer messages on MMS. In China, 39% of the total newspaper reading audience 
are paying to get twice daily news updates of what is in tomorrow's newspaper through MMS. Brilliant. I mean, this is absolutely, this is a multimedia platform made for you guys and huge usage around the world. So, but is MMS the future? No. Sorry, guys. It's this stupid, simple thing called SMS. 4.2 billion active users on the planet. SMS is bigger than the total radio population of the planet. Every one of them a paying user. In India today, one third of all of the SMS is sent is media, not person to person SMS. This is the future for you guys. Now, I know it's very simple, it's not glorious, sexy iPhone apps, etc., but this is the future. Now, let me show you a little bit what happens. One in seven people, when they consume media content, are consuming it on a mobile phone or having the mobile phone with them. To, uh, three quarters of Americans, when they're watching TV, are also consuming mobile phone content or speaking on the phone or sending text messages or, or checking up the sports scores or whatever. If you're in media and you don't understand these numbers and what your customers are doing, you're pretty much preparing yourself to, you know, soon be, you know, teaching about media. Anyway, <laughs> MTV, music TV money, I told you, $3.2 billion. Here's the statistic from Juniper. Um, so, I need to rush. So, let me show you a couple of examples from around the world. We need to start from SMS. Sorry, guys, but look at this. American Idol, uh, France, uh, uh, a Nouvelle Star, Germany, Deutschland, Super, their superstar, you know, uh, uh, you know, Finnish Idol, Australia Idol, whatever, have a billion dollars of bonus revenue beyond their advertising revenue out of SMS voting in one year. So, you know, uh, you know uh, the game shows, uh, uh, you know, um, so, so what, what, what's it? Um, um, I know, Idol? Uh, no, no, uh, uh, game or no game, what's it? Deal, or, deal, no, or, no deal, deal or no deal, $56 million in revenue just in America out of SMS voting, etc. I mean, that this is huge. Every one of you can make money out of SMS, whatever media you're in, in your newspapers, you're in radio, you're in television, whatever advertising, I mean, this is a wonderful platform. What do you do beyond that? Then you do this. You teach your script writers, your directors, your producers to work with SMS. Soap operas like Hollyoaks. They write it into the script so that the girl gets a message and the story continues. She smiles, she looks at us, but she doesn't talk about that message today. Eventually the audience will find out what the message uh, was about three or four episodes later, next week. But if you're a diehard fan, you want to know what she read. So on the bottom of the screen, you just put, if you want to read the message, send a premium message here, cost you one dollar and you can read the message. Now, 10% of your audience will pay for this, 90% won't. That's extra money for you. Don't throw that away. Teach your script writers to put it in the script. Teach your producers, teach your, you know, the, the people in this industry. Here's where the money is. Sophia's Diary, what John was talking about earlier, that we want to have the audience co-create our experience with us. Spain invented this with mobile, they were doing it with telenovelas for a while. So, so this is the, the place where we can do, we ask the audience, what do you want next? Do you want the girl to fall in love with the guy or do you want him to break up with him, etc.? We write it into the script and so forth. So, but those were nice ideas that everyone knows. Let me give you two that very few people know. I want you guys to make this a success so you can impress your boss, be a big success. I put you in my next book. I can say that, oh, we met in Cannes years ago and so forth. So, copy these ideas. First of all, we talked about measuring the industry. It is very difficult. Mobile makes measuring really easy. It's native to mobile. So, copy PowerPoints from New Zealand. Simple idea. You flash a screen, on the bottom of the screen, a certain logo, tell your audience whenever it flashes, send a message within one, sec one minute, send a text message to us, and you can win a car, you can win a tri trip or whatever. We also refund your, your messages, so you get credits back. So we're, this is not premium scam. This is honest broadcaster, we just want to find out about our audience, you have a chance to win a car, a chance to win a trip and so forth. What do you get out of this? You get by far the biggest participation data out of your customers, but much more than that. You find out if Tommy Ahner is watching the beginning of the show and stayed till the end of the show. Better than that, if you're a commercial broadcaster, we find out if I was watching during the ad breaks, because you flash it also a couple of times during the ad breaks. Find out, am I stay, sitting still and watching the ads or do I go <laughs> over to the kitchen? If you have two channels, you can see if I'm sw swapping channels at one point. And most importantly, if you're a producer with schedules, do I follow to watch the next show that comes immediately after this on your channel? 
This is so much more powerful than what you can hope to do with Nielsen boxes, and far more accurate when you do this over 100,000 customers. Brilliant. So do this, or then do this from the Philippines. Text the star. This you need to plan in advance. You need to get permissions. You need to get the, the agents and the actors to agree to this. But consider, you have your new drama show. It's going to start in September and run next season. Why don't you get each of the actors to agree that for one week, that actor will answer every message sent to them, every text message. In this case, these are premium SMS text messages, one dollar each. The actor promises to answer every legitimate question sent to them. Obviously, in real time, they're not killing their thumbs with their Blackberry trying to do this. All the bad questions are eliminated. The good questions go to the personal assistant who knows your favorite color and knows where you met your wife and so forth. And only the couple of really strange questions go to the actual star. The amount of money, phenomenal. The amount of interactivity your audience will love talking to the real stars. Every person gets an honest, real answer from the star, answering the question honestly. Even Tom, if Tom, I gotta jump in. Yeah. That would be seen as astroturfing, right, in the internet world. Because it's not the star who's answering what color is blue, it's the assistant, and we all know that. So how do we actually know that the star has actually answered the question if it's a really unique question? I mean, how do we know that their, their assistant isn't uh, writing on, on Twitter? So, you don't, so, you don't, so, but this is a big problem that's happening with celebrities. They're but that, this is the same so for all media. I don't think this is, in that case, unique to SMS. The beauty in SMS compared to whether we try to do something like this or Twitter or fa Facebook is we can make the money. Yeah. And obviously, this should not be abused. I mean, those need to be the real stars answering the real questions, and their personal assistants need to have the honest answers to the standard questions. Right. So, but anyway, it's been done. So I'm not inventing something new for you. This was done in the Philippines years ago. I want you to copy this and do this in France and do this in Belgium and do this in Germany and, and so forth. Um, so then, let's go a little bit beyond SMS. There is actually more to mobile than just SMS. MMS, America. This is what the, the most popular youth show, Pretty Little Liars, did. They offered MMS updates. Once a week, you get a secret from the TV show, which will also show you a preview of the next episode. 12% of their target audience signed up for this. Come on, this is the future. Of course you're going to do this. How about MTV Backstage Pass? The brilliance in this is not that Tommy is watching MTV because he's stuck in, in the car and he can't get home to his plasma screen. No, the brilliance is that this was designed that I will watch this premium content while I'm sitting at home at my plasma screen watching MTV. I'm selling a second screen simultaneous broadcast. Why? It's the backstage pass. So the rock stars who are performing at the stage, we can see what's happening at the backstage. Of course, not everyone's going to pay for this, but some of the fans will love this and pay for it. It was so big a success, you know, MTV Networks does this now on all their, their video music awards. But it was invented here in Europe. So, so we can do stuff in video. When we get video, then we get this user-generated content. So then we get CNN I report. we get all the news channels which are asking all of their, their fans to send in the news and, and, and breaking news and, and so forth. Obviously, the innovation opportunities get far bigger as we move along into the more advanced stuff. So I'm running out of time, so let me show you, whoops, let me show you this. Let's make it magical. If you really want to see magic in mobile, you go to Japan. I could have, you know, four-hour session just about mobile TV, cool stuff, magic in Japan. Let me just show you one, Hoshi Ichi Maniac. Number one star maniac. Who has heard of Hoshi Ishi Maniac? Couple wonderful, good. Okay, so this is a game show in Japan. The beauty of this game show is that every audience member can participate in the live broadcast TV show and put themselves into the TV show. No producer gets to select who comes on who wants to be a millionaire. Every member gets to put their own avatar Create it and go into the show and try to answer. And if you answer correctly, you remain in the show. If you answer incorrectly, you are removed. 47,000 Japanese signed up to join this game. They threw 170,000, 160,000 responses before they found a winner. This was the absolute rating winner of its time slot. The second generation currently offers people to send, use their camera phone to send your face. So in the avatar, you can actually put your own face. 
that will actually let you, you see yourself, not just your avatar, but you can actually you know, have your real uh, picture on it and so forth. This is the future. When we look at augmented reality, virtual reality, 3G, uh, wireless, Wi-Fi, everyone on an all-you-can-eat data plan, etc. this is the obvious future where we'll go. This is the kind of stuff we need to study. So, Google thought, Eric Schmidt says, put your best people on mobile. You are in the right room. Your future will be made a success. Much as I love Facebook, much as I love Twitter, much as I love the iPad, etc., that is not the way you will make your success. Your success is understanding the numbers I showed you, and you will start by adding SMS and MMS into your media platform, and you will be such a huge success. Whatever else you do with your iPhone uh, apps and your uh, Android apps and, and iPads and, and Facebook, etc., is cool. Brandy on top and uh, gravy on top, and you'll be, be a further sex later on. But as long as you understand that today, every television viewing person has their mobile phone within arm's reach. They can all be talked to by SMS, and they're willing to talk back to you. That is your success. That is where we go. So I'm here to meet you. Remember Tommy, the crazy guy with the hat. I'm here all to the rest of the day. Please come and talk to me. And if you want my book, here's you, where you go. You go to lulu.com, search for Ahonen. You get Tommy Insider Guide for Mobile. 350 pages, released this January 2011, my 10th book. Absolutely the, the latest in, insights. There's a chapter on, on mobile TV, media, etc. So, so please download the book and, and review it on, on Amazon, I mean on Lulu if you, if you like it. There eventually will be a printed version of it as well. So that, that brings me to the end, so, so please follow me on Twitter. And I think we have some, some can interviews. Some can we ask some questions? Yes. Now the first question I want to ask, I, the guy in the hat right there, you. You guy. You said you haven't learned anything. Have you learned something? Not <laughs> really. I, I need to talk to you, and I need to learn from you. I'll tell you why. I come from India, and the chat we are giving was for mobile. In India, it's for choice. It's a demand for choice. You know, people don't have a TV set. People don't have an iPad. They will never have one, but they have a mobile phone. And uh, people have never been to poor families. They, they have started reading because they want to, to send SMS. SMS is very big. I make it. You're, you're killing me. <laughs> but we will have a session I will learn from you yeah. because I want to put I your stories in my next book. India, yes. you know? I, think, I, I think we really should. There's a, a lot of stuff going on over there, and you sound like the guy, so definitely come and talk to us. Maybe we've got an impromptu panel, possibly. There's a, there's a gap in the schedule, you know, because you'll see it on Thursday. I think it's Thursday. What day is, is it? Is Thursday? So we're going to have a secret panel. Something's just going to, you're going to have to watch Twitter, and maybe we should have a discussion with you and, and Tommy, and we're just going to put together a flash panel. We're not sure if we're going to do it yet, but just watch your Twitter. You'll see it. It's a secret thing. But I, it's this sort of stuff that we want to talk about. Yeah, we should be talking about India. If you're making a ton of money in India, let's talk about it. Those are the sort of things. Any other questions for Tommy, quickly? Yeah, right here, Stuart. I wanted to kind of come back to the astroturfing thing and this idea that if you're watching TV and you have to pay to get something, what is the narrow line between annoying people and making them feel engaged with the show they love? I, I think that, that there's, there's no uh, textbook you know, answer to this. This is that the audience has to love doing it. Some people will mess it up and they will get annoyed customers. But I think the, the, my, my main customers are telecoms operators and handset makers and, and you know, really anally you know, engineering people. They're not the right people to do this. They're not, but the media people are creative, and I believe that if you put it as a target that we want the audience to love the experience they have, like uh, Dirty Little Liars, Secret Little Liars, what was it, the, the American show. I mean, 12% of the audience signing up for this, they have to think that the content is good. They're not going to do it if, if not. That should be the standard. You have to make your audience be delighted, have a magical experience. Love the, the magic we had earlier, Disney, that John told that Disney turned him to believe in, in magic. That, that absolutely, we want to make magical experiences. So, so in that sense, that that should be, not necessarily magical, but they should be pleasing, satisfying experiences, definitely. Not the kind where they feel that I'm being robbed. And they're horrible, like we have here in France, in Germany, et cetera, the, where people vote, you know, the, at night they try to guess the stupid puzzle which you have to send tons of money and you never win. Horrible scams. They should be absolutely outlawed. You know, just making, uh, destroying the goose that lays the golden egg. I have one here and I have one yes. So, <clears throat> so apps and, and app stores and so forth have been around, I don't know, maybe two years or so. And 
obviously there are as many impressive statistics in that platform. And yet the numbers you threw out there are pretty impressive, but those numbers have been pretty impressive for a long time. So something has happened to the apps and ecosystem. And, you know, I just was curious, I mean, why hasn't, you know, why haven't these platforms that you're describing here exploded in the same way that the app ecosystems have when the numbers clearly have been there? And then I would sort of flip that all the way upside down as well and say, I think what I take away from your presentation is that apps are even bigger than we think they are today. Because when apps hit the kind of numbers that you're talking about, then you really have something. So I'm curious, why hasn't any of this stuff really sort of taken off in, in, in a way that, or, or, or am I just not getting my head around? I mean, I, I think you've alluded to a lot of good points about how MMS sucks and we don't use it, or is this just something happening in other parts of the world, or is it, you know, just help me understand there, there, that. There, there, sure. Name and, uh, Brian Rain from Ericsson. Very good. So, so uh, very fir first part of that answer is on the apps overall. I totally believe they will be huge. They will be bigger than SMS and MMS will be, but it will take them 10 years to get there. We will not have, the planet will not have 50% smartphone penetration until later part of this decade. So, uh, so smartphone penetration will keep on growing. In the Western world, they are becoming a reasonable uh, opportunity, but very fragmented. But yes, it will be huge. But then to the second part, the SMS and MMS, how can you possibly think that SMS is not the greatest success on the planet where SMS earns $112 billion bigger than radio and did this in 17 years? Grew, six, uh, grew, hold it, three point, grew 500 million users in the last 12 months. Grew users, grew traffic, grew revenues, grew profits in the last 12 months. We are all thinking that SMS is going away. It's not. It's still growing. Its growth is not as big as it used to be. But it, Ericsson num numbers, by the way, Ericsson was first to, to publish the 4 billion numbers, so thank you. Anyway, so, so last year. Um, we, got, we got one more yes. question over there. Hello, Mr. Tomi. I'm um, very angry about you. Uh, because hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I need to ask, where you, what's your name and where are you from? Uh, my name is uh, Dmitry Nosikov. I'm from Ukraine. Uh, what's your company? Uh, online One Company. Okay. Uh, why angry? Because if I correct understand your philosophy, 98% uh, of all of us use cars with petrol and diesel, and we are shit. But uh, and, 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 and this is good, and this is future, and uh, other 2% who use cars with electrical engine is bad. You told us about SMS. Uh, personally, my company, we don't know all about this. We come here to speak about maybe new markets, maybe a new technology, maybe about future. We all use SMS. Personally, my company have more than 60 services for television with SMS. And now we understand that this, this is end. This is no, no future of this technology. More, more future with technology, we, we speak about uh, web browsers, uh, about content which, per, which uh, our... Um, uh, uh, which um, p people generate inside a web browser because all of your SMS users every day come to his computer, open in a computer or on his mobile de device and they use Google, they go to internet. He's making a really good point because, and you didn't yes. mention web browsing because yep. now everything moving away from apps and it would be interesting to hear what the Ericsson guys would say, but as you know, there's been a lot of stuff that's come out and maybe Michael from Mobile Roadie because we did talk about this is that everything's moving into the browser experience. Forget about apps, actually apps are going away. But yet you're still saying, let's focus on M. So are, are you essentially there, saying that, that there's, an op there's a big opportunity still in SMS, but we still have to monitor the other stuff? There, the, the very, very good point. And I love the fact, I mean, Ukraine is one of the more advanced countries in terms of, of adapting and using SMS widely. So I was just there with the, the, the uh, Mobile Monday event uh, uh, last month in, in, in Kiev. So, so uh, know, know the market moderately well. And, and so good, uh, a lot of lessons that we have been telling the rest of the world from the Ukraine. And, and, but I in interesting to hear that you are feeling that the, that part is, is uh, saturating for that market. My, I hope I was clear in what I was trying to say. If you are in the media today, whatever, advertising, newspaper, radio, television, anywhere in the media space, and you want to talk to your total audience, the only way to get there is SMS. That will get everyone who is using your media on the planet. 
they're mostly likely to talk to you with that media as well. 82% of mobile phone users are active users of SMS. Even in America, it is now 64%. So every country, everywhere, you can talk to your, in uh, Japan, it will be wireless email. Uh, on, on every country, you can talk to your audience with mobile phone messaging. Then the second part that is today totally relevant for media is MMS. Works just like SMS, but is more powerful because it's a multimedia platform and reaches bigger uh, audience than the internet. Eventually, beyond that, we will have video. We will have the mobile internet. We will have smartphone applications. These are all coming. We can build cool stuff on them now already, but that will not get you the mass audience yet. So then read my, my 14th, 15th book, and we will talk about that later. I am here to make money for you, not talk about the future of what cool things we can do with augmented reality, with, with uh, projectors on mobile phones, with three-dimensional displays on mobile phones. These all exist. You know, my, my Samsung has the, the, the Pico projector. It's cool. I can do a two-meter screen on, 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 you know, from my mobile phone. But that's not mass can market we today. See that? Can you do it right oh, now? Uh, absolutely, yes. Yeah, I mean, sorry, uh, that, guys, yes. I just, sorry, I just geek, really geeky, said. nerdy, but just, I mean, absolutely love nerdy. it. Yes, yes, so, so, I've, so, I've heard about yes, yes. So, so these are already released in, in uh, we have them in, in Asia. So, so uh, who, who do we want to show? So, um, because of the light, obviously, we, we... Can we turn that into a black screen? So, 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 no? so, yeah, so... you want to take them both down? Uh, no, okay, and, um, but any, anyway, so let, let's just take here let's some James... Let's see your email. James Bond, J James Bond, so, sorry you know, about try my... right here, right here. So, so, no, 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 it needs a uh, white. So, white. so okay. um, if you, you know, James Bond is kissing the girl. If, if, if you can see so so and it, it you know in a dark hotel room it goes to a two meter screen I've watched you know aliens you know etc kill bill 2 etc on this works fine battery life is great great phone can a shark yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's just really like slightly thicker that's like iPhone the best part of your presentation. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. no 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 this will be the best part yeah, okay. so so yes yes yes, yes so so let's okay. let's give a book away so let's do a little contest interactive contest you have to yell out the name of the country. Which country today has the highest penetration of mobile phones per capita subscription? Yell out country. Finland was once, not anymore. Philippines, no, not even close. Russia, no, but it's a good guess, but not yet. India, no, not even close. India is not. Uh, who? China, no? Let's get this side. UK, no, but it's a good country for Europe, you guys moderately can't high. Play anymore, you got so, so, so many wrong. US, not even close. US just hit 100% this quarter. Taiwan hit 100% 10 years ago. Korea is a good guess, but no. Who back in the back? Portugal, no, but it's a good guess. It's a high one in Europe. Kazakhstan, good guess, but no. Indonesia, no. Turkey, no. Hong Kong, good guess, no. Not anymore, it was once. Italy is what used to be the highest in Europe, but not anymore. Uh, Ireland. Ireland, no. Singapore. Sweden was once, not anymore. Singapore, no. Malaya? Malaysia, no. Hong Kong was already said, no. Brazil, no. Good guess. Who said Dubai? Dubai is the one. Wow. Arab, United, Arab, United Arab Emirates. Ralph, Ralph wins it. Um, guys, the first country to pass 200% per capita mobile phone penetration. United Arab Emirates. 204% ITU statistic for 2010. More than two phones for every live person. So this is not adults. This is not counting from, from people who can read for the whole planet, 200%. So, so, yes. Can you come up and receive your Ralph? book? You're, like, yes. you're a rock yes. star. Come on. Yes. You're a rock star. We want to know who you are. I mean, you're the yes. only one who knew it. Come on, come on. Come on, Ralph. Is he a friend of yours? Yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> But Ralph would know. Yes, yes. The chairman emeritus of the, the mobile end. entertainment board. Wait until the end, and you're like, then I'm going to say it. Oh. <laughs> nice to meet you. Uh, what's your name? Where are you from? Ralph Simon from London. And what company do you work for? I work for Mobilium. It's a mobile phone company. Thank you very much for getting the right answer. Here's the book. Give it to someone. Uh, you give it to someone. Okay. Give it to a friend. I'll sign it to him. Yes, yes. Like, like he has already a copy, so he's, he'll give it to, uh, to you know, someone else. I'll sign it to them. But please, yes, everyone, thank you. Please join me in thanking Tom for an amazing presentation. That was great.